This means that your risk of infection only decreases by 0.73% uh, if you get a vaccine. Let me say it again. Your risk of infection only decreases by 0.73% if you get a vaccine. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel here. I want to take a look at this 95% efficacy rate of vaccines that we all hear about. I'm sure you guys have heard this before. Um, and, you know, we'll just take a look at how this number is calculated. And I want to show this because um, if you look at how they calculate these numbers, um, it can be very misleading the way they present these statistics. And um, so, yeah, let's take a look. So if we look at the Pfizer study, right, we got 44,000 people in the study. So 22,000 were vaccinated, 22,000 people were not vaccinated. Um, of the vaccinated, eight out of the 22,000 were infected. And out of the placebo group, uh, 162 people were infected. Okay, so the, in the infection rate, the actual rate of being infected, um, which you would calculate by being, you know, taking the amount of people infected divided by the amount of people not infected, for vaccinated would be about 0.036%. Okay, and then for the placebo group, respectively, it would be 0.74%. Okay, so what does this tell us? This means that you have a 0.74% chance of infection if you're not vaccinated. 0.74%, right? Okay, and then you have a 0.0... Not buttoned here. You have a 0.036% chance of infection if you are vaccinated. Okay, so how do they get this 95% number, right? Where does this come from? So... This number is actually something called relative risk, which you calculate by taking one minus the infection rate of vaccinated divided by the infection rate of the, of the non-vaccinated, the placebo group, right? So this would give you about uh, 95%. Okay, so it's, it's really the, uh, the ratio of infection rate of vaccinated and the infection rate of um, placebo that, that they're telling you. But, okay, when you observe relative risk, you have to take an absolute risk. And what is absolute risk? Well, this would be the difference between your infection rate of um, placebo group and um, vaccinated group. Just the difference between the infection rate of those two groups, which is 0.73% chance, right? We have a 0.74% chance placebo group and a 0.036% chance in the vaccinated group, the difference between those would be 0.73%. This means that your risk of infection only decreases by 0.73% uh, if you get a vaccine. Let me say it again. Your risk of infection only decreases by 0.73% if you get a vaccine. Okay? So the 95% it's it's not important if the absolute risk is, is not taken into account. Because if you look at relative risk, you need to observe absolute risk. Because in the context of COVID, the relative risk is really only important if the absolute or actual risk of getting infected is high. And even more importantly, the risk of death from consequently being infected is high, right? Because why does it matter what your infection rate is if you're not even gonna die from the disease in the first place. It really doesn't, right? So let's take a look into the numbers even further here. Uh, so now that we know that your risk of infection decreases by 0.73% chance if you get a vaccine, and you are, you know, the one that they all wanna say is, you're 95% less likely to get infected by getting vaccinated, but your chances were only 0.74% in the first place. So let's now calculate your actual risk of death from COVID-19, okay, this is the important one that we should all be looking at, which we can calculate by looking at the infection rate divided by the death rate, okay, in, in the placebo group, this is if you don't get vaccinated, and your chance of death from contracting, your, your chance of death from COVID-19 is 0.015%. Your infection rate is 0.74%, right? We got this earlier. You have a 2% chance of dying. 0.74% divided by 2%. 0.015%. That's nothing. 
that's nothing. You got 1%, that's a pretty small chance, right? Every time you get in your car and you drive to the store, you got about a 1% chance of dying. Okay, you got 1%, it's pretty small. And then you got 0.1% of a percent. That's really small. That's even 10 times less than 1%. And then you got 0.01% chance. And that's your chances of dying from COVID-19. My name's Daniel. Hope you found this interesting. And we'll see you in the next one.